There's a new technology that is a total game changer when it comes to developing and manufacturing a new product. In fact, I'd call this new technology absolutely earth shattering for entrepreneurs, startups, and smaller companies developing a new hardware product. And surprisingly, I bet you've never heard of it before, even though it can save you thousands of dollars and allow you to get your product to market much faster. You won't even really find this technology discussed anywhere else online yet, and it's almost one of the best kept secrets in all of product development. In fact, I think it's the best new technology for developing a product since the invention of the 3D printer. So you do not want to miss this video. At the end of this video, I'll give you some price estimates so you can see for yourself how much money this te new technology can save you. But first, let me explain the general problem that this new technology solves. So 3D printing is great for making early prototypes of your product, but 3D printed parts will never look like or feel like or have the same level of quality or durability as production parts. Basically, 3D printed parts look like they're 3D printed and not mass manufactured. So they look like a prototype and not a real product yet. In most cases, you won't want to sell your product using 3D printed parts. So this means your marketing and sales activity is limited by their non-production quality. To get production quality units, you need to use the same method that's used in mass manufacturing, which is injection molding. However, injection molds are made of metal and they're expensive. They cost thousands of dollars each and they typically take many weeks to have them made. This has always been a huge obstacle for anyone launching a new product on a limited budget because it's really critical for you to limit your expenses as much as possible until you can prove your product will succeed. And the only way to prove it will succeed is by having a successful sales test. In the past, if you wanted production quality parts that you could actually sell, well, then you only had one choice and that was to pay for these expensive metal molds. This meant that there was no way to do a sales test without first spending thousands of dollars on expensive metal molds and then waiting weeks for their completion. The other big problem with metal molds is they're difficult to modify and you almost always need to make design changes during the early stages of development. Injection molds also need to withstand high temperatures since the plastic that's injected is in a liquid molten state. This is why injection molds have always been made from metal, usually aluminum or steel. Fortunately, there are finally, finally some better options. Instead of 3D printing your product, you can now 3D print an injection mold for your product. What's so exciting is that there are various new materials that can be 3D printed that can withstand the heat and pressure required for injection molding. These 3D printing materials include you have high temperature plastics, you have ceramic, and then you have dissolvable high temperature plastic. You don't need to 3D print your entire mold. Instead, you just print inserts, which are then embedded in a generic metal mold. Your first option is to use a plastic resin that can withstand high temperature and pressure for molding. This will generally be the cheapest option, although the next two options are also really affordable. The second option is to 3D print these mold inserts out of ceramic. And yes, there are 3D printers that can actually print ceramics. Here's an example of a ceramic insert that was 3D printed. You can tell it's a very hard ceramic with a very, very smooth uh, surface finish. So ceramic is going to be the most durable material that you can choose for 3D printing these injection molds. And it's going to just last a lot longer than the plastic options, which just means you'll get more parts out of it. That being said, the 3D printed molds are all so reasonably priced that you don't need to produce that many units for it to make financial sense, especially in the early stages when you're doing more prototyping and just some low volume production for sales tests. In fact, with the third option, you only get one shot per mold since it uses a dissolvable mold. Wait a minute, dissolvable mold? It sounds crazy at first, I know, but there are now dissolvable plastics that open up lots of new possibilities for molding and using them is referred to as free form injection molding. 
One of the main complexities with any type of injection molding, whether a traditional metal mold or a 3D printed mold that's made out of plastic, is you have to follow very strict rules when designing any parts to make them injection molding friendly. For more details on injection molding rules, you can see that my suggested video that I recommend at the end of this video. Many of these design rules for injection molding are necessary in order for the plastic part to be easily removed from the mold. For example, you can't have what are called undercuts because having them will make the part impossible to remove from the mold. You either need to get creative in your design and eliminate any of these undercuts, or you typically would need an even more expensive mold incorporating what are called side actions. And side actions are just moving parts of a mold that are inserted during the molding process and then they're pulled out and removed after the part has solidified. But they add a lot of cost to the mold and just a lot of complexity that's best if you can avoid it. Using a dissolvable mold completely eliminates this design restriction because you no longer have to pull the part out of the mold. Instead, you just dissolve the mold away, leaving the finished part behind. This is why it's called free form injection molding, because you can freely mold any shape part without the typical restrictions of injection molding. So here's an example of a dissolvable injection mold. And you can see the blue part here. This is the mold that the two halves come together to form the cavity for the part on the inside. So the blue part you see is the dissolvable plastic mold. And then this is the part that's actually being molded here. So you would just dissolve away this black part or the blue part here, and it would leave the part behind. And you can actually reuse this other half of the mold. It's only the one half of the mold that is actually dissolved. So that lowers the cost a little bit since you get to reuse at least half of the mold. These molds are usually going to be dissolved using sodium hydroxide, but you can also even use distilled water, although the dissolve time is going to be a lot longer. A couple of points to keep in mind. First, eventually, you will want to use traditional metal molds for mass manufacturing. So it's in your long-term best interest to design your parts to meet the typical rules required for injection molding. Secondly, since a dissolvable mold only produces a single part, the part cost is going to be quite a bit higher. For these reasons, I think a non-dissolvable high-temperature plastic or better yet ceramic will be the best choice for most products. If you wanna implement this really exciting new technology, well, you have two options. Your first option is to purchase your own Nexa 3D printer, which is capable of printing with all three of these materials. Now, this printer costs around $8,000, so it's not gonna be feasible for everyone. And if you're gonna use the dissolvable molds, you'll also need an agitator, which adds another couple thousand dollars. Your second option, is to purchase the 3D printed molds from a supplier, although I only know of one company that offers this service so far. Next, you'll have four options for actually molding your plastic parts. Your first option is you can purchase a low cost hand press, which allows you to actually do the injection molding yourself at home. These can be purchased for as little as a few hundred dollars. Your second option is to give the 3D printed mold inserts to the local injection molding company or a company that you're already working with and just have them do the actual injection molding of your parts. Your third option is if you're only producing a few molded prototype units, then I only know of one company that offers this service. Finally, if you need more than 300 parts, then there's another company I recommend for that. So you're probably thinking this all sounds amazing, but how much cheaper is it really compared to using a traditional metal mold? Well, there are lots of variables that come into play like part size, but for smaller parts, the cheapest metal mold you can typically buy is gonna be at least $1,500. And keep in mind that every unique plastic part that makes up your product requires a separate mold. Even the simplest enclosure design you'll need at least two molds, one for the top side and one for the bottom side. So that's a minimum cost of about $3,000 if you're lucky, if you call $3,000 lucky. Compare that to a 3D printed mold that can cost as little as $50 for small parts. So you're talking a total of only $100 for a typical two-piece enclosure. 
This huge savings is why this new technology is such a game changer. Anyone taking advantage of this amazing new technology has a massive advantage over the competition, especially since your competition likely doesn't even know it exists yet. This technology is still unknown to most, and there are only a couple of companies that currently offer it. Members of my Hardware Academy have special access to this earth-shattering technology, and in fact, we recently held a live workshop that was hosted by one of the companies behind this new molding technology. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to learn more about injection molding, then be sure to check out this video here.